Cayman Nature, a journey in search of a peaceful and prosperous society with human nature as a guide. Led by your host, Adam Heyman. Hello and welcome to Heyman Nature. It is August the 2nd, 2024, and with me is Josiah Baker, the chair of the Libertarian Party of Tennessee. How you doing, man? I am spectacular, man. Could not be better. Um, I've been leading off with the date in these shows. Any idea, any guesses why? Uh, probably post edit things getting mixed up reasonable reasonable guess but no it turns out that i have magical powers because <laughs> uh, my partner and i we did a um a mid-year uh, uh uh guesstimation what's gonna happen in the future show a prediction show and i had a bunch of crazy ones and one of them was this was before the trump biden debate if you can bring yourself all the way back to five weeks ago. <laughs> and I said that uh, either Trump or Biden or both won't be on your ballot in November. <laughs> then Biden melts down and then he gets yanked under suspicious circumstances. And someone takes a shot at Donald Trump and puts a hole in his head, technically. <laughs> so turns out I am Nostradamus or Cassandra. We don't know which anyway. So I lead with the date. Uh did a did a, did some kind of bet on that? I can only imagine the odds of both of them. <laughs> right, <laughs> and it's just barely August. I mean, Dude. anything could happen. This simulation is getting weird. They've not even tried to kill RFK yet. Hey, uh, what does what does God hate there, my man? I'm going to leave that for the big reveal for those. <laughs> now, this all is, right uh, that I got from my boys over at Good Morning Liberty. Beautiful. It always Beautiful. looks <laughs> and double takes. <laughs> I am rocking a shirt that I got with you. Yes. In the afterglow of a Dave Smith comedy show in Reno and great, great times. It's uh, oh, here. It's a picture oh, of yeah. our, our favorite health our commissar, <laughs> Dr. Truth Science himself, and uh, how, how I feel about him. So tell me about things in your neck of the woods. What's going on, my man? Yeah, Tennessee, we, uh, for those that are really on the inside baseball LP circles, you can look at our voting record. Uh, we, I'm a national Mises Cox board member as well. Um, we're going to have a thriving party, you know, for those that care about LNC related things. There was a, a candidate chosen. We've been doing a lot of initiatives. We have a lot of people throughout the state that are thriving the best funnel that we have into the party and our movement is single issue coalitions. We work in lockstep with the homesteadering Alliance, uh, the homeschooling crowd. We also defend the guard. Y'all defend the guard. We actually got it to the floor, got it out of subcommittee and committee. Tons Hell of yeah. Um, we work with the gold bugs. There's a gold bug legislation to make it legal tender in Tennessee. That's on the docket this year. Nice. And, um, we work, you know, we were, everybody has an American for prosperity. There's always issues you can find there. Hell, occasionally you can find an anti-war issue with the lefties if you can stand to smell them. But <laughs> <laughs> so we have a, a real, we understand big picture. We're very net liberty. And in my opinion, coalition work is not only a recruitment funnel because you build rapport with people in the real world with a track record of doing things. Um, and they go, oh, these guys are addressing issues I care about. Maybe I should listen to them about others. But it moves the needle as a minority party in the state. And at the same time, again, net liberty. So saying all that to say this, when uh, we also are, we have a, a lawsuit against the state of Tennessee for minor party ballot access currently going on. Uh, Mr. Mr. Linger is representing us in that. And one of the things that we knew noticed right off the bat, after LNC and the candidate was chosen, um, our efforts, we were getting signatures. People were like, yeah, we need more voices because, you know, everybody loves democracy. But, <laughs> and take a drink when you hear that word. But um, <laughs> immediately it was like a record, record scratched because we had so much national attention with Trump and RFK being there. Yeah. And then with Mr. Oliver getting the, uh, the nomination, people were like, no. 
because you all you all they did was go to Twitter, they go to Google to be standing there and be like, yeah, I'm okay. So we saw this immediately with our ballot access drive grind to a halt. And I went, we have all these other initiatives with people that might be red, blue, independent, whatever. And Tennessee is very much like a lot, a lot of states. A lot of people are single issue voters. And the biggest single issue voting right now is uh, chemical castration of children. I don't call it the cute name. I call it what it is. And um, I sat on it and I thought about it and I pondered on it and other people did what they did. And, you know, I don't live anywhere else. I live in Tennessee and I'm in sales. And a slogan we have is never be first to market, be best to market. And so I waited and I, I wrote up an op-ed with the full preface being what happened at LNC, what was going on on the floor, what we were looking to do, um, uh, how Mr. Chuck Moulton told me, yes, this is absolutely in order if we needed to suspend the rules to amend the bylaws to start this process again, because we didn't have consensus for those who like the word consensus on a unified situation. And there were people on the floor that could have been nominated that are universally loved. Uh, was true. You know, um, cough, cough, spike was in the room. And, uh, you know, that was my intent. It didn't go that way. And so I said, well, what can I do? Because I'm a steward of my state party as chair. I'm responsible for the work being done and the growth being had. And we've, whether it be legislative, whether it be a plethora of everyone ranging from constables and sheriffs running on nullification of weed and gun laws to state level candidates, not just this cycle, but 2026 as well. So it's short term and long term. We have multiple people that are, number one, they're electable. If That's a caveat. If, if you want someone to run, they need to be electable and inherently impressive in their communities. We have that right now. They're coming to us. I don't need that to grind to a halt over this issue. Yeah. Whether, they, whether they are in, I know where everyone's at on this issue of candidate wise, but they don't, I don't need to create a problem for my candidates or our growth. So I wrote an op-ed. Um, stating it was, it was a little bit of Martin Luther nailing it to the door, <laughs> but I, 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 and it was a personal op-ed. You see that this is not a party thing. This is me as chair. Yeah. And I will post a link to, uh, to what you, what you nailed to the church door there on, on Twitter. <laughs> and, uh, I also said, uh, lucky, luckily with our ballot access laws, to get independent on, I think you got to get technically 275. You aim for 600 because they always throw people out. But we had uh, two people step up that say we understand the mission. The mission of the presidential ticket is to speak the values, espouse the principles, reach the remnant in our movement, um, and get those people to understand they're serious about doing things. Not about getting votes. Right. As we know, do not equal movement. Right. Well, it's movement. It's in a circle. It's not forward movement or productive movement. So, well, it's important. Uh, I want to underscore that um, a couple of things. One, yeah, where we're at in the third party, votes can't be our primary concern. Obviously, our our primary concern has to be spreading the message of liberty, and you do that by working with people in areas that you agree, and hopefully, your good values and character will rub rub off on these people. I mean, that's why it was so great to have. Vivek Ramaswamy, uh, RFK Jr., and Donald Trump come to us and bring national attention, three <laughs> different metrics, and they get to hear what we are. Mm -hmm. They also get to see lunatics doing lunatic things. <laughs> <laughs> but but while while we're at it, we are, the best of us are there, and we're talking to them. And, uh, and even more importantly, as you're doing in Tennessee locally, you're working with these people and pushing the ball in different liberty directions based on issue coalitions. And I just... I just love it. Um, I don't want to talk trash about our national ticket, but I mean, it can't be argued that um, he is a divisive candidate. Maybe, maybe there were no candidates on offer that weren't divisive. I mean, that argument could be true. Mm, Dave, true. Dave Smith didn't run. Spike Cohen didn't run. Um, but I mean, you were saying that for a lot of people in your area, the his stance on medically um, stepping in and hormonally transitioning children is a bridge too far, and I could certainly understand that point. But I'm wondering if uh, 
if it isn't sort of a deeper dislike, like maybe that's the fake because that's the reason they settle on. But really what they're looking at is the guy's Twitter feed and is wearing the mask and is advocating social distancing and is sort of parroting the, the line, the cultural line and not focusing on the right issues from a certain perspective. Maybe it's just a blue pill, red pill sort of thing. It could be. This is why I listed all the reasons, whether it yeah. be housing COVID propaganda ad nauseum or um, hardly any 2A presence aside from a couple of awkward pictures at a range. Or, and I'm, again, this is, just, this is just going off of what I see. Um, yeah, at least his finger was straight. Yeah. Um, for me, I mean, I know he can't think he's going to be popular when the second a certain faction takes control of the party in Reno in 2022, he immediately takes to Twitter to call us all big bigots and Nazis Yeah, and to go out of his way to tell everybody how much he doesn't think Ron Paul is, is any good. That's a weird thing to say if you want to be a unifying presence in any political party where at least half of us think Ron Paul is the greatest influence in this century and in, in pulling people towards liberty. That was weird. We listed that. And uh, here in the state of Tennessee, the Mises Caucus people are the, the majority, if not super majority. Um, when it comes to doing, uh, we have good faith neutrals that are doing stuff as well. But yeah, that's the first thing I listed is when you disown and say disavow people like this without so much as acknowledging and re and repenting for it. Are people supposed to hold their nose and think that didn't happen? It's almost the kind of behavior that would lead you to be a guy who only wins on the seventh round beating Noda 60, 40 after making a crooked deal with one Mike Termont. I mean, <laughs> that is not going to be a unifying presence no matter. Well, the deal I think included, it's my understanding that Mike Termont got, within libertarian land, uh, the equivalent of qualified immunity amongst the ranks. <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's unfortunate. And uh, I mean, I want to give the man the due, his due. He's done some interviews and he can answer libertarian questions in a principled way. You know, I'm not trying to say he's the worst thing ever, but you know, like I had a problem generally speaking with uh, Gary Johnson because, I mean, while I probably would like him as my governor, I don't like him as my proponent of the libertarian political philosophy because he hasn't read anything. Right. He doesn't think that way, and he doesn't communicate that way. And I think Chase Oliver is better than Gary Johnson, but he has some problems too. You know, I, I think his his understanding of the issues is sound bite thick. You know, it doesn't really go any deeper. Yes. So. It I wish the man well. He's going to be on our ballot in Nevada. Mm -hmm. We felt like that was our duty. Um, but as I wrote on the LNC business list, I am I am a firm believer in decentralization, and I'm not kidding. I think yeah. our state affiliates ought to have the right to do whatever they think is best. And I can understand why that might make us look weakened or fractured, but I think it's I think that's wrong. I think it makes us stronger. There's no no one's confused about who the national ticket is. Even people that don't want to put them on their ballot, they know who mm -hmm. the national ticket is. So that, that kind of messaging is still going to go far. But there are people for whom, there are states for whom, if they had this ticket on the top of their ballot, all of their down ballot candidates suffered for it. Yeah. There's some parties that might have just disappeared because mm -hmm. no one wanted to support this guy because he's divisive uh, on purpose. You know, he's proud yeah. of his divisiveness and, and, and he I mean, leans into it. The receipts are there um, that, you know, you can just go look through Twitter. I mean, there's a lot of compilations. Michael Malice has some really good ones. But but again, the big issue where I'm at with decentralized with Tennessee is people were like, what is going on here? Because people in the real world in these coalition groups have been sticking their neck out to work with the state LP on stuff. And they, because word association, libertarian, they were like, we need clear what's going on here. And mm -hmm. so I did, did what I did. I personally, as I said in an op-ed, I am supporting Clint Russell and Josie, the redheaded libertarian, as an independent, uh, because they speak the principles with conviction. This is a non-issue for them. This is a non-starter to them. The issue of uh, children being trans is a, inherently an age of consent issue. I agree. And not swimming to those waters. 
I agree. <laughs> um, let me ask you a technical question. Is it the case that it sounds like you have very easy ballot access with the number of signatures required, but is it also the case that no one gets on as a libertarian, but just as an independent? So that you is, have many of those? That, is, that has been the case in Tennessee forever. To be a Republican or Democrat, you need 25 um, in partisan races. To get on as an independent, it's 275 in a presidential. To have an L next to your name in anything um, statewide, it is right now, I believe, just over 44,000 signatures. Hello. But whether it be the Kanye West Party, the Libertarian Party, the Green Party, that's what you need. So everyone defaults to independent route yeah. and they has forever. This is why we're doing the ballot access lawsuit. Um, and so that's what it is, but also at the same time, nothing prevents 20 libertarians getting the signatures to run all as president to prove a point. It just matters if their supporters want to do the work to do that. Sure. You know, that's the exploitation laws are written to be squeezed and exploited to find, you know, water flows to the lowest point. And, and Am I understanding correctly that uh, Oliver and Termot will be on the ballot as an independent because they are, somebody's doing the work to get that done? Their crew is out there getting signatures. Um, lots of good faith people in our state party are, are assist. A, a few good faith people in our party are doing that. Um, I know their campaign had a VIP event today at Pharmacy Burger in Nashville, closed door VIP event. Um, there is a there is a presence and and we're not doing anything to prevent it sure you know i know dave benner is helping as well dave benner is a mises guy as we all know yeah i love uh, that dude he was just out here recently we uh we made memories together yeah <laughs> Dave's the man. dave is the man so yeah again this is the this is you have to operate in reality like uh, and the problem with libertarians is a lot of times we operate within our head and the person yeah we're and the person we're talking to, we're, give, we're giving all this. And they're just like, sir, this is a Wendy's. Um, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> like, Dude, I think you're so right. And I, I can defend that position. I mean, for a long time, there's been like less than 100 of us in the country, you know, for a decade or two. And so, yeah, we sit there and pontificate and thinking about a magical, uh, imaginary political constructs and, you know, argue about what's best. I think it's uh, I think the current messiness in the Libertarian Party is an example of the fact that we're for finally growing up and putting our feet in the real world where it's messy and uh, messy and muddy and you have to make alliances. Yeah. Um, I think for a long time, people like even thought issue based coalitions were dumb just because of the impurity icky factor. And that's crazy. Yeah. If you want if you want to move things politically in a liberty direction, you you've you've got to operate on the margins by definition. If I want the, if I want the car of my dreams to go anywhere and I want and I, I at least need to know the guy that has the keys and owns the car. Sure. The, that's coalition groups. Cause these people, coalition people, they, they might not be the guy, but they know the guy, you know, so it's sometimes, and, and then it's influencing people in these groups to not do the bidding, but to do what they say that matters to them, you know? And, 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 I tell so many, I'm in sales, if you can't tell. And so many times, dude, it's easy to not just talk past the sale, but be speaking in Greek to someone because you never stopped in real time to go, okay, let me get this person's value system. Let me know. Because if I'm not playing by the rules of their internal system, nothing's going to land. You won't even know their language. Exactly. Exactly. And a lot of that libertarians are like, no, it must be this way. Let me talk for no reason at really long sentences. When people just want to know what's up with this grocery bill being so high, you know, mm. being able to boil it down and make it digestible. So that's what we're doing. Um, we went to the, uh, we had two, three great back to back. Robbie the Fire Bernstein, love him. He did that's a great. portrait out in Memphis. Um, we had 10 new LPTN members that were fired up for Robbie the Fire Bernstein there that joined the party. Oh, that's awesome. Then out in Bon Aqua which don't even look it up. That doesn't exist on a map. Uh, we did one there. Folks were folks were doing a recruitment campaign at LPTN. Um, and then the big one was the part of the problem. Dave Smith show. They had sold out one show, did great. So they added a, a previous one and we were out there working the line like crazy. Oh, smart. We should have done that. He was just here. <laughs> 125, 125 ballot signatures. Oh, um, nice. Josie, nice. Part of the problem. Everybody knows Clinton Josie. 
it was a great show. Ton of, you know, it's a room full of our type people, people that love good humor, very connected politically, a few right wingers, but you know, that comes with the territory. Well, ideally we should be pulling from both, right? I mean, we should be right. drawing people in and, and emphasizing where are the vast majority of areas where we, over, we overlap in a way that you never will with Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham and yeah. these lunatics who just despise you as much yeah. as, as much as AOC does. hundred percent. So we show's great. Uh, you know, they reset the room, got some more signatures. Part of the problem came on for, you know, they did their wild podcast. Everybody can see it on YouTube or on their new website now, which is right. awesome. And uh, the Q and a came, uh, Robbie brought me the mic and I just asked, Hey, you know, I'm chairman of the LPTN national NISA caucus board member applause audible. And, uh, <laughs> Clinton Josie is who I'm personally supporting. I know you're friends with both of them. This is what we're doing. We're trying to speak to the remnant, grow our ranks with Liberty people doing things. Uh, would you retweet it? That was, that was the question. And then he went on a dissertation that uh, essentially the last three weeks have been so crazy that if you're not focusing on the national political stuff and wasting time, on Twitter bickering about internal party things and your little insignificant party, which he said he he'd like his, per, his people to control the insignificant party. Then you've lost the plot. You don't know what's going on. Oh, wow. Your, it stuff doesn't matter. And I was like, okay, got it. Got it. And then everybody from the caucus stood up and walked out and got more signatures on the way out. Well, and, I have to interrupt you for just a second. Because it just occurs to me that this might be fodder for a little segment on this show called Hey Hero, Your Fly is Down. Yes. This was a Hey Hero, Your Fly is Down moment. So, yeah, I think he's missing the point. And I, and I, I kind of forgive him because he is at that national level all the time in his head. You know, he doesn't, he's not a boots on the ground guy. That was a good qualifier at the end of that sentence. I like that. Um, so, yeah, I, don't, I just don't think he, he probably wasn't thinking about anything except the fact that what Colorado is doing in Montana to a lesser degree and what Philadelphia almost did is causing the national party a bit of a problem. Hmm. But I think we'll get through it. I am a firm believer in, again, the decentralization. Uh, I think we need to lean into that as a strength of our system, and it's not a flaw. And, uh, yeah, I, I bet Dave is just wasn't thinking on that level. Well, and I was asked yesterday on um, me and Sam McHugh, one of our Mises organizers and regionals out in App Appalachia region. I always say that wrong. It's either Appalachia or Appalachia. I have no idea. <laughs> Yeah, we were we did interview a Good Morning Liberty yesterday about it, and you know one of the questions from the live group was, well, maybe did anybody preface him with the questions or anything? And and of course, no. I want to know what are what you think? Yeah, you're pulling from and your mental yeah. for an answer, and it just it it frustrated me honestly because first we wouldn't be sitting here if he had not decided what he did. So you got to take chicken shit and make chicken salad. <laughs> carry the torch even when you somebody drops it or lays it down or whatever and we need the purpose of that role is to espouse the values to grow the ranks to do meat space real shit and the thing that really uh it, it disturbed me was like he he is he's one of the most gifted orators if not the most gifted orators in the liberty space movement For i mean sure. the way he dressed down chris cuomo about covid but if you remember these things of state level and local level that suddenly do not matter, only focus on national. Well, everything he espoused and in the great Tom Woods book, it's the importance of your yeah. local state localities. Yeah. This is the most important thing against corrupt national edicts. That's the whole thing of COVID, the whole lesson we learned. That's right. And you know, it is what it is. I still love Dave's program. Um, you know, other than being his chauffeur at freedom fest in South Dakota and, in passing, you know, at, at conventions and stuff, it's not there. I'm more of a oh, the dude, uh, the dude is great. Um, but that doesn't mean he's flawless. My very first uh, yeah. segment called, Hey hero, your fly is down was for Dave as well, because he was 
railing about how unimportant the trans issue in sports thing was compared to like <laughs> fiat money and you know the wars and you know a hyper regulated state and you know i sort of get what you're saying it, if you if it was only like what was happening in the pool you know with this willie thomas racing against chicks like like if, if that was the only thing that was happening it wouldn't be that serious yeah but these people are trying to hijack our language and deny us the tools by which we think it's not a minor deal if you let them convince you that this dude is a chick you will be able to be persuaded of anything because you've lost the ability to to, to believe the obvious evidence of your senses of your basic mm -hmm. you know common uh, common sense your understanding of biology so yeah we can't just uh gloss these things under the under the rug and i and i think he knows that uh, again i just think uh, he reacted off the dome and in yeah. your situation and i i bet if somebody laid it laid it out to him like that he he'd have a change of heart yeah i mean i would hope so and again i, I like i like what dave does uh, yeah, definitely i really like what he says but this you know your state affiliate matters oh yeah you no know, um and, and to be fair if you're not actually doing anything we have all these people that are terminally online and you know it's very ironic that we can bitch on one hand about all y'all do is argue online and then in the same hand be like all we need to do is talk more online <laughs> I said yesterday that tweeting is the fiat currency of actual productivity. <laughs> That's a good one. Anybody, I, uh, anytime I, anybody reshares something, they're taking a shit, just so you know. Usually. That's the feedback you're getting. <laughs> it's that old joke, you know, I can't believe the surveillance state installed an app on your phone that lets everybody know when you're on the toilet. <laughs> hey, it's true. Like what? It's like, yeah, it was called Words with Friends <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> Um, I got to tell you, it sounds like you guys are firing on all cylinders with your ground game. Like you should send me a long email and give me some pointers. Cause we're not nearly as active here in Nevada. I'm ashamed to say what we did, dude, we tried to, uh, you know, I remember back when Heist put out his video dissertation on public or uh, project decentralized revolution. Mm -hmm. And we, we took that and we implemented it and we put it into things. One of the things we do on top of candidates that want to run, you know, with us, there are also, well, that leaves a large gap in all the candidates out there. Mm -hmm. So thanks to Brandon Nelson, who was in California party and Rich Leach, they got together and workshopped a candidate grading survey based strictly on issues that matter to libertarians. You send these to a candidate, they fill it out. If they don't fill it out, they get an automatic F. Nice. Fill it out. You can grade them on their stances. And this is where the tweet comes and actually has teeth to it. When you go, Mr. John Smith, that's running for state house, whatever, here's how he feels about these issues. We grade him this. It's not an endorsement. It's simply a voting guide based on issues. Yeah, we did the exact same thing here in Nevada, a nice voter guide. And we gave our candidates the gold thumbs up. And then we ranked everybody else one, two or three stars or I think zero stars was even in there. And it wasn't an endorsement. It was just here's how they rank. And I'll tell you why. And uh yeah, we'll be doing that again this cycle, too. I thought that was pretty useful. It also serves dual purpose because not only do the candidates and their team go, oh, God, this is just out there. Doesn't matter what group puts it out there. This is it also is a signal from not only their followers or general people in the community. Oh, these people care about these issues. Maybe right. I should be. And then, boom, you've got a pipeline. So there's all you got to find utility in everything, man. No, I totally agree. And I'm only half joking. Send me an email. Give me your ground game. Maybe I'll try and implement some of it here. <laughs> uh, well, Josiah, I, I don't want to keep you forever, but uh, I love what you do. I'm sorry you got into a brief spat with Mr. Smith, but uh, I'm, I'm going to take your side on this. National will take care of itself. I think the all the action happens at the margin, and the margin mm -hmm. is the state level. Um, or county level really yeah. um i believe firmly in decentralized political uh, order um so yeah i, I love i love it keep doing more of it and uh is there anything else you want to plug or promote we'll put a we'll put your missive your lutheranian missive uh in the show notes um and the guy who's talks that is nice isn't it that's <laughs> on there but yeah um no i don't uh not really don't do twitter you know, you can find LPTN on Twitter, LPTN1776 on Facebook. Um, do you run a D 
Do you run the LPTN Twitter account? That is Adam Fargo, and he is a master. When I did, he get, says no a lot, dude. He says no, no. Yes. When he did the op-ed, oh. within <laughs> he was like, "My train, my training has brought me to this moment." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was impressed. He did not. He did not back down. That was <laughs> that was lovely. Awesome, Adam. This has been great, dude. Anytime. Uh, look forward to talking with you soon. Absolutely. You're the best. Um, I will talk at you later. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for listening to Hayman Nature.